Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 32 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's dig into sends, buses, and auxiliary channel strips, what they are, why we use them, and how to set it all up so you can route audio from one place to another across your projects. So let's go right ahead and open the mixer by pressing key command X on our Mac's keyboard. Now let's bring our attention to the send fields of each channel strip in this mixer. First, let's go ahead and set up a send, bus, and auxiliary channel arrangement, and then we'll dissect what all these things actually are. So if we hover our mouse over the empty send field for our beach channel strip and then click, a menu pops up, offering us the opportunity to route our audio either via a bus, which Logic provides up to 256 different buses for us to route audio, or through an output of your audio device. For today, we'll just stick with buses, but if you have several dedicated outputs on your audio interface, you could send audio from this channel strip directly to an output on your hardware. From the bus menu, we'll select the first available bus that's not currently in use, which in our case happens to be bus one. Once selected, we can see that the send field has been occupied with the label bus one, and Logic has automatically gone ahead and created an auxiliary channel strip that's been named aux4. Okay, from here, what does any of this mean? What is a send, what is a bus, what's an aux, and why do they matter? The best way I can think of describing what a send and a bus and an aux actually are is to use an analogy. For the sake of this discussion, let's just imagine that every track in your project, every channel strip is a pipe with water flowing through it. So just imagine that water is flowing from the top of your channel strip down to the output and just continues to flow from one end to the other. To get this mental image going, let's take a listen to the tracks in this project and just imagine as we're listening that each track, each channel strip is water flowing through individual pipes. All right, so we have the B channel strip with its own audio flowing through it like water. Then we have the amped up channel strip, once again, with audio flowing through it. Then we have the basis channel strip and then the chords channel strip. Right now, the individual track and channel strips audio streams are completely separate from one another until we get to the stereo output where everything is combined into a single left and right signal. So as we work on our projects, we adjust the individual faders for individual channel strips and streams. We adjust the panning of individual tracks. We apply audio effects to individual tracks. Now that's all well and good, but sometimes you wanna be able to route your audio from one channel strip to another for different reasons. And the combination of a send, bus, and aux is your way of being able to route audio from one channel strip to the next. Imagine the send field is a spigot or a faucet on the side of your house. When you turn the handle of that faucet or spigot, water comes out. Right, so maybe you wanna water the garden in the back corner of your backyard. But to be able to get the water from the spigot, the faucet to the back corner, we need a hose. And that's what a bus essentially is. It's a hose or a pipe. So when we set up send field number one with bus number one, we're basically attaching a hose to the faucet, the spigot. So now we have this incredibly convenient way of sending audio from the side of the house to anywhere in our yard that we need to. And so one end of the hose is connected to the faucet as send number one. And the other end of our hose that we transport over to the garden is set up to spit out right at aux number four. So now we can send our audio from one channel strip to aux number four. And all we have to do is turn on the faucet just by clicking, holding, and increasing the send level. We're not seeing anything with aux four because I have the channel strip muted. Let's unmute aux4 and let's increase the send level. And as I increase, now we're seeing more and more audio from our beats transport over to aux number four. So now we have essentially a copy of our beats channel strip and track playing back at aux number four. In fact, let's turn this all the way off. Let's unmute our stereo output so we can take a listen to the beats channel strip.
And now I'll increase the level to aux number four. I'll solo the aux so we can hear this occurring. All right, just like with a faucet, the more that you turn the handle, the more audio passes through bus one to our separate auxiliary channel strip. Okay, so that's the general idea and mechanics behind sends, buses, and auxes and how they work together. But probably your next question is gonna be, what's the point? Why are we going through all this effort to route audio from one channel strip to another? Well, the main reason for all this effort is efficiency. For example, perhaps you want to apply the same reverb treatment to several tracks in your session. So it feels like they're in the same cohesive space. Now we could load an instance of a reverb effect on each individual channel strip by going down to reverb and we'll select chroma verb. And we could copy this instance of chroma verb to each and every channel strip. And if we take a listen, Now, no doubt out of the gate, Chroma Verb sounds awesome on these tracks, but perhaps we want to try a different preset sound. Now we have to go through each and every instance of Chroma Verb to apply this sound. If we take a listen. And if we want to adjust further controls, we have to do this for every instance, which is kind of a pain. But with sends, buses, and auxes, instead of having four instances of chroma verb, we could instead hold option, click, hold, and drag this copy over to the aux. And now we can apply this reverb treatment with a single plugin to all of our tracks. So I'll select the amped up channel strip, hold shift and click the chords channel strip. And then I'll set send field number one for all of these to bus one. And I'll hold option and click on the send level to set all of these to full blast at zero dB. And I'll hover my mouse over the left edge of send field number one on the beats channel strip to power back up send number one to aux four. And now if we take a listen, we'll set the dry to zero and the wet to 100%. So the only thing we'll hear from aux4 will be the reverb effect. So just like that, with a send, bus, and aux, we're able to apply a single instance of reverb to all of our tracks. So now if we wanna start pawing through different presets and making adjustments, we can, and we can hear those effects instantly without having to resort to having to open individual plugins. The other reason to route audio in such a way using sends, buses, and auxes is efficiency with your max resources. It takes more processing power to have four instances of Chroma Verb versus a single instance. The more plugins you have in a session, the more processing power it takes to play back your sessions. Again, if you intend to use the same exact effect on multiple tracks in your projects, sending your audio through a bus to a separate auxiliary channel strip to apply that effect saves you time, effort, and Mac resources. We can adjust the level of our send effect by either adjusting the level of our channel strips going into, in this case, our reverb by adjusting the individual send levels. And we can do this on a per channel strip basis. I have all the channel strips selected. That's why I was able to dial all of them up or down. Let's adjust each one individually.
or we can adjust the level after the effect using the fader of the auxiliary channel strip. So basically, it's a question of how hard do you want to hit the effect going into it via the send level, as well as how loud do you want the effect to be overall in your production by adjusting the aux fader. Typical candidates for this style of parallel processing where we're sending audio from our channel strips to a separate auxiliary channel strip for further processing is typically reverb and delay effects. But you can also use this style of routing for parallel compression, modulation effects, and much more. Just remember with any mix knob or dry and wet sliders to always have the dry slider set to zero and the wet set to 100% because we already have 100% of the dry signal through the individual channel strips. What we're after with that separate auxiliary channel strip is just the wet effect. From here, we're gonna change the pan knob for our beats channel strip from balance to stereo. From here, let's explore the three different ways that you can customize how your audio is sent to your separate auxiliary channel strips. And we'll take a look under the send field for bus one. To start with, we can see that post pan is enabled for send field number one. So if we mute all these channel strips and let's solo aux four, and let's take a listen as I adjust the fader and the pan knob for our beast channel strip. All right, so as I made adjustments to the fader level of the beach channel strip, we heard that reverb level of aux four both decrease and boost. So the fader level had a direct impact on how loud or quiet our beats reverb sounded. And when I made adjustments with the pan knob, we heard that reverb effect on the beats lean more to the left and to the right. It wasn't completely to the left or to the right, and that's probably because of the preset that's chosen. So let's maybe choose something a little less crazy, maybe a small ambience. And let's take a listen again. So in the case of both the fader and the pan knob, when I made adjustments, this had a direct impact on the level and panning of the beats through this chromoverb instance. Going back up to send field one and clicking, let's now select post fader. And now when I hit play, take notice of what occurs when I adjust the fader as well as the pan knob. Here we go. With post fader, our fader adjustments still have a direct impact on the level of the drum reverb, but our panning choices and adjustments have no influence at all. Our drum reverb doesn't pan in any direction. And we know we're in post fader mode because our send level has changed from a green ring to that of a blue ring. So once again, if we click on send field one, let's now try out pre fader mode. Take a listen and take note of what changes as I adjust the fader and the pan knob. As can be heard and seen, our fader adjustments and panning adjustments have no impact on our reverb effect. And we know we're in pre-fader mode because the dial next to the send field has now swapped places. Instead, it's now on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side. So this is really handy. We can now make specific adjustments on a per channel strip basis in terms of how we want our tracks to be placed across the stereo field within the reverb 
how we want level adjustments to have an impact on the reverb level for that instrument. For example, maybe we want the reverb level for the drums to follow the level of the drums exactly. Maybe we don't want our panning adjustments to be influenced by the panning of our amped up channel strip. And maybe we just don't want to have any influence at all on the reverb for our bass or chords. This provides a lot of opportunity for customizing your send effects on a per channel strip basis. All right, in the next video in our series, we're gonna dig into track stacks and how helpful they can be. I'll see you for more next week in our Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.